So, hey, and welcome back to my Soul Sacrifice Delta uh, playthrough. So, let's continue. And again, I know I said it in the last video, but what's so special about this game in terms of its presentation is how well it combines, um, you know, music, the tactile feel of, you know, turning the pages with your finger. Uh, through the book and excellent but subtle sound effects like just here As you can hear the fire crackling and it really helps sort of you know the presentation of the game and I know that um, at least in terms of people I've talked to um, the majority of people who didn't really like the story of Soul Sacrifice, the reason is because they never really got into the story of Soul Sacrifice. Like, I, I've barely seen anyone who followed this through the story and said they didn't like it. It's either it grabbed them or it didn't. A lot of people prefer cutscenes to this style. But, uh, I really, really love this. I love how it's presented. Yeah, so this is the first uh, real boss. So Jack-O-Lantern is kind of like um, the Yian uh, Kutku from Monster Hunter in terms of like, it's the first real boss you fight. Okay, so let's get rid of this and stick this on for defense. So Jack O' Lantern, actually, here, I'll, sw I'll swap that out for this because Jack O' Lantern is weak against ice. So you have like a few um, sort of uh, elemental spells and each monster is weak against certain spells. So, ice beats fire. And jack-o'-lantern is fire, of course. I'll save up my fire spells. Just use some agility. Uh, and I'll stick to my blood. So, blood spells don't use. Um, one other important thing, I guess, that I failed to mention was uh, your spells, the more you use them, the more uh, they get destroyed. So, basically, in this world, in order to use a spell, you have to offer something. So for normal spells, you just offer objects. But uh, for uh, you, you know for larger spells, you offer body parts. But the exception is blood spells. Blood spells you don't use a normal offering. You use your health as an offering, which is nice because you can basically use it as much as you want without breaking your offering object. There you go. So he's... Okay, yes, I know how to play the game. I have an ice shield. He's gonna roll at me. Now he's gonna fall on his ass and get owned. Even Sortiera is pitching in. He's using ice spells and he starts to get ice on his body. Things for me. 
thought he was rolling at me there. Alright. I may be wrong as well, but like the sunset in the background, it looks like they added lighting effects to it. I don't remember this stage quite looking like how it does here. Hitting him, he's gonna freeze, which is good. There you go. So now we can beat on him for a little while. There you go, he's finished. So when you beat a boss, bosses are all former humans, so they briefly go back to their human form. So you can either choose to save them or sacrifice them. Now, believe it or not, the good guys in the story are the people who choose to always kill, always sacrifice. That's the sorcerer's code. But if you want, the, ba the bad guys are the one who sort of feel compassion and save the monster. So... I tend to be 50-50, and of course, right now, my sacrificing skill is lower than my saving, so he's dead. And this is going to net me quite a bit of experience. Yeah, it leveled me up in one shot. See, I ate something from that tree, and then it gave me some weird ability. But didn't have enough time to see that one. I'll keep my eye open. character feels so naked um, compared to uh, how he was before. Like, I had not every spell in the game, but most of them. This is when you sort of confront uh, Sortiera's um, bloodlust. Oh, and I got a jack-o'-lantern uh, skill. Early on in the game, that's one of your more powerful uh, abilities. Do I want to get rid of my shield, though? Yes, I do. These are categories of spells? Yeah, they are. So it's the way they're presented. Oops. Oh, these are all pages I can't read yet. Oh, cool. Alright, so those are done. Alright, so let's kill these birds. For birds, a good spell is actually uh, a throwing knife spell, which you could... Uh, 
it's used in a variety of, uh, of elements because it locks on and hits them. Once it hits them, they fall down, and you can just beat on them before they get up. Once a bird is on the ground, they pretty much they're finished. But I don't think I have any of those spells yet, so. I'm on my own for this one. That's neat. So, it basically, I did like a, a combination of the uh, rapid movement spell and then combined with my sword, I did like a running slash. I don't know if that was possible in the last game. So, I'll try that again. Yeah. So, basically, as soon as you take out your sword, it allows you to like put away your sword. If you have the super speed out, if you just tap the button, the sword button, you do like a running slash. That's neat. I don't think that was in the previous game. So that's a neat way of uh, combining two spells. A new way, I think. As far as I know. I wonder if any more spells can, can be combined like that. Uh, save. Librum interrupts here a lot in this story. This occasionally comes in to add his two cents about something. Or, oh, something's gonna happen. I think this is kill, 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 everywhere, I think. A harpy. This could be tough. I remember at the beginning... Oh, nice. So now I have access to black rights. So, wow. Oh, you have a lot of them. Wow. Okay, I wonder what those other are at the bottom over here, over in this section. Um, so this one is in Furnace. So that's what I have on now. In Furnace is the one that uh, Magusar used. Okay. This is a tunneling um, spell meant for dodging. Okay. So every monster here 
has its backstory, has a really cool backstory. So Harpy's was particularly terrifying. Uh, Harpy's backstory, which is not explored in the, in the main game, you have to actually go and read about it, um, is that <laughs> she was this woman, uh, I think she was really morbidly obese, and uh, she saw this guy, she fell in love with this guy, and um, he traveled somewhere, and she just wanted to be with him, so she basically made a, a deal. Uh, like a forbidden oh deal, which gave her wings and that harpy-like appearance. And um, so she flew to where he was, found out that he had a wife and kids, and then ate them in anger. Um, or rather, maybe not in anger, but instead of love, she learned that she was actually just hungry. And he, instead of being infatuated with them, he just looked delicious, so she ate him, and then proceeded to terrorize the town. Uh, so that's kind of terrifying. Right, this is her transformation. If, at the high level, what you should be doing at this point is pressing start to skip that, and then attack, preparing your attack. Oh crap, sorry, this move, you just gotta get out of the way, you gotta run. Lantern's moveset is really good against Harpy. Crap. sacrifice. It's getting weak, but there's a pile of bodies over there, which technically count as a sacrifice. So. He's injured in his wings. They added like kind of new graphics to the blood spray. It looked a little different than it normally does. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. it's warning me that my my offering's about to break. Oh shit! So you can't overdo it. Once your offering starts flashing red, stop using it if you're not, uh, if you want to keep using it through the match. Ooh, Harpy's gonna go down soon. He's gonna go. There you go. So you can see, like, some semblance of the, the woman that she used to be. save this person is going to depend on my level. So since I am only level 3 and I want to stay neutral for for saving, she lucked out. She's going to save. Sortiera of course is going to try to kill her anyway, but they never win. I'm going to win the power struggle here. Come on! There we go. And then of course she adds her two cents in. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. If uh, you want to keep watching, just tune to the next one. I'll just pick up where, where I left off. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.